Astronomy GCSE Topic 13 Light Curves We need to recognise or you might be asked to sketch a number of light curves uh, What is a light curve? Well, the brightness of a variable star changes with time The brightness of all stars changes a little bit with time but a variable star, it changes significantly and there are two main reasons why this could happen it could be things happening inside the star itself which may change its radius, how big it is, may change its temperature. This is uh, an intrinsic variable, it's called. Or there could be things happening outside the star which is changing the amount of light that we see. For example, it may be uh, eclipsing binaries. That's an extrinsic variable. And these variable stars, they may have very short periods, short period variables, or they may have uh, very long periods. It can be from minutes to years. Okay, talking about things which may be happening inside the star. Uh, this often happens to stars near the end of their life. This is probably what will happen to our sun when it becomes a red giant it will pulsate it will get bigger and cool down and then gravity pulls it back in and it gets hotter and then it expands again and it cools down and gets bigger and then gravity pulls it back in and it gets hotter again and it pulsates and as i said this is what will happen to many stars as they approach the end of their lifetime they will pulsate like this Here are some uh, light curves for some long period variables and it's basically the, the brightness goes up and down regularly as the star pulsates. These ones have a, a period of about a year. You should know, it's in another video that I've done in this topic, uh, about Cepheid variables and why they are very very important how they are used to measure the distance they are standard candles you can use them to measure the distance to galaxies that were very useful for edwin hubble uh, the interesting about thing about them is that the longer their period is then the greater their absolute magnitude so if you can measure the period of their pulsation you can work out their absolute magnitude and if you know that you can work out how far away they are. Cepheid variables. Now when very very big massive stars reach the end of their life they explode. Uh, we'll talk about this in topic 14. Uh, this explosion is a supernova, a very very bright explosion. It's like a bright star if we could see it from Earth, a bright star appears from nowhere uh, and then over the next few hundred days it dies away and it disappears. In 1054, Chinese astronomers observed a star in the constellation that we call Taurus and then this star faded away over a couple of months. And then if you look where it is now, where it was rather, you see the Crab Nebula, which is a supernova remnant and somewhere in the middle of the Crab Nebula, there is a black hole. Uh, another type of explosion is a nova. Now, a nova, not as big as a supernova, uh, you've got two stars. One of them is a, a white dwarf and the other one is a red giant. And what happens is that the, the gravity of the white dwarf is gobbling up material from the red giant. The white dwarf gets heavier and heavier and heavier and when its mass reaches a certain value, we'll talk about this in the next topic, the Chandrasekhar limit, then it explodes and you get a flash called a nova and then what may happen is that it could do this repeatedly. So it flashes and then it gains material again and then it flashes again and then it gains material etc. This is a nova. An eclipsing binary. This is stuff happening outside the star. An eclipsing binary 
this is where you have two stars orbiting each other and depending on the angle that we are looking at them depending on our perspective they could be eclipsing each other so they go in front of each other they take turns eclipsing each other and if you look at the light curve you'll see that when the brighter star goes behind there's a bigger dip and when the dimmer star is in front there's a smaller dip and this is a typical light curve for an eclipsing binary uh, a very famous binary although now we know it's actually three stars is Algol it's very easy to find in Perseus and it has a period of about three days Algol it, it gets its name from an Arabic word meaning demon's head Algol uh, in Perseus it's actually the eye of Medusa One last thing which can affect the amount of light coming from a star. Uh, I mentioned this in my video about exoplanets and that's the transit of an exoplanet. If a, an exoplanet goes in front of a star, then there will be a dip in its light curve. 